And let's go to Anaheim now. UFC 298 is there. A man who stole all the headlines earlier in the week was Captain Eric. When we thought he got fired by Henry Cejudo in the end, of course he was just working us. That's what he does. He's a worker. He's a pro wrestler. He's kind enough to join us. He's got a big week ahead with both Henry Cejudo and Mr. Secret Juice himself, Paulo Costa. Hello, Eric. How are you? I got you guys. No, you didn't get us. You didn't get us. I knew it. You lied to me. I reached out to you and said, is this real? You said it's as real as it gets. Why would you lie to me? Why wouldn't you tell me off the record? As real as it gets because you got to twist the world of (laughs) MMA when you're trying to teach. I try to teach my fighters. You guys got to be able to promote. to, to, And I had to show them by example. You had to. When did you come up with this idea with Henry? Man, so me and Henry got together, and bro, I'm just joking. That shit was real. Stop it. Stop it. What do you mean that That was real? That was real. You guys did it in front of the countdown cameras. When was that shot? How long ago? So here's uh, that's the thing. Nobody understands when that was shot. So that was shot in early December. Okay. And then what happened? If you follow me on my Instagram, you would see that I'm in Brazil. Yes. For the last two months. With Paulo and Patricio and and building a uh, the Broad Street house down there, bringing international fighters in and and, and building the next generation of fighters. So uh, that was real. It was real. I hadn't seen Henry since after the fight with with Al Jermaine. He came to Brazil to the Pitbull Brothers in Natal. He even trained a little bit. And then I hadn't seen him until that count ca- that day of the countdown. And where was that so, shot? At fight ready. And and you didn't work with him at all? No. No Not interaction, camp, but no text messaging, no sending videos, no breakdowns. Nope. Oh, my focus was uh Paulo and and Patricio. You know, like Henry says, it's business. This is a business. And when Henry has a world title fight, I drop everything. No, there's no other, uh, I don't go to any other camps, right? Well, Henry's not the champ now. Patricio is the champ and he's fighting PFL. So that would have been priority. And I'm, as I get to Arizona, I'm like, man, now I got to leave Patricio because, you know, me and Henry, no matter what goes on, I'll drop everything for Henry. And, but I was like, how am I? I, I really want to do Paulo because Paulo. Uh-huh. Hey, Mr. Secret Juice. Uh, boy, there is no problem. What's up, bro? There is no problem. This guy is the best coach yes. of MMA. And he has a spot in every big thing he wants. He is my coach. Uh, I saw Merab, the I should be want he yes. coached him against Henry. But this guy is... Is part of Secret Juice team, brother. Oh, okay. that looks Secret fantastic. Juice. When can I try that? When can I try the Secret Juice finally, Paulo? Very soon. After, right after fight, I'm going to fly there and bring... Oh, oil. my God. You look fantastic. How's the elbow, Personal. Paulo? Paulo, how's the elbow? Show us. It's all good? good? Oh, God. Very Everyone's good. still worried you're not going to show up. Are you going to show up? Oh, my God. I'm. Of course, I will. I'm here. I have to show up. I never... You know, just when the doctor moved me for the fight, but thanks God. Huh? Huh? Let's but see the abs. God, I mean, Let's see the abs. Let's see huh? the abs. How are the abs looking? Let's see them. Let's see them. Oh, you know, you know me, yourself, I got you. the best abs. I got you. You I know you. yourself. And, and, and then you're going to propose. You're finally going to promote propose to Tamara in the cage afterwards. But, wow. Oh, she's here? Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. She's in the room. Oh, t- today. Valentine's Day is back. Yes, this is a great idea. Yeah, so <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm gonna play that. I bring a, a special for one, my friend. You deserve that. I, I, we're gonna, we're gonna give to you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. See you, uh, see you guys. Yes. Don't, don't miss Saturday. I'm ready. Prepare. I will test my new elbow on with the face. See I can't you guys wait. There. I can't wait. Thank you, Paulo. Great to see you. Um, so Eric, now you're gonna get secret juice. You got some darts from Ryzen. You hooked me up. You're getting all the the the, the proper Stuff. things, MMA uh, MMA popular uh, trends, viral things. But okay, now now I don't but, understand because yesterday you said we worked you all. 
it was a joke, but now you're trying to say it was real. So what is it? Is it real? Is it not real? What would so we? So nine weeks ago is when it was filmed. Yes. And you know, you know, I helped create the King of Cringe. Yes. So I know Henry better than anybody else. So everybody thinks, well, it had to be staged to be on to to be on camera like that. When you, I've been on, you know, a couple of uh, tough Brazils, the Ultimate Fighter. When cameras around, I know what 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 goes on is uh, is like a show. So I could feel. I'm like, oh, all right, hold on. UFC countdowns here. Henry's about to say something to me because he says, "Hey, Captain, can I have a talk with you?" We all know what that. You know, I'm like, wait a minute, something's about to go down. So I'm like, all right, I need to get in mode to respond to what he's gonna say and the thing was i've been with henry for 20 years which means we're very close and like he said i, I think he might have said it on the countdown show he's like yeah we, we butt heads we have training philosophy di differences and and we're very close like uh like paulo and his brother and uh, one thing I saw in Abu Dhabi with Paulo and his brother for three weeks, Paulo was his brother wasn't there, and when he arrived, they were butting heads. I was like, "Huh, that's exactly what me and Henry do." Mm. Now I feel better that you know Henry and I butt heads, but so does uh, Paulo and his brother sometimes. So I know uh, I know what the relationship is like. And when Henry said that, "Hey, Captain, we butt heads a lot. I want peace of mind," and I was like. Okay, I know you do. We butt heads. So, if this is what you want, I said I'm gonna be front row, cheering you on. I got Paulo and Patricio in, in Brazil training for the PFL. Paulo's training for a shot at UFC 300, and, and, and if when he beats Robert Whitaker, Bobby Knuckles, you got uh, the PFL chance with Paulo. I mean, Patricio fighting Saudi Arabia. Biggest MMA pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia history. First MMA event. So I'm a rock. I, I'm on the path to create the number one team in the world or maintain it. And I need the new generation. So I, I, I started building. So I took, I wasn't with Henry for the last eight weeks. I got a, build a, got a house in Brazil with a, it's called the Broad Street House. We brought in guys from Kazakhstan. We got guys from Dagestan coming, Uzbekistan, Mongolia. And that's what I did. So I stick to the path. I'm always uh, striving to be, to try to get that coach of the year spot. I feel baby. you. I feel you. Are you going to be in his corner on Saturday? He asked me to be in his corner again. Yeah. So, so when you saw that, in, yeah. when you saw us at the UFC countdown, that was real. He was coming in. I heard Henry was coming. I go, I haven't seen Henry since December 10th or something. I'm going to go see him. As soon as we saw each other, it was like reunited and, and it feels, feels so good. good. So oh, it was, glasses it was changed. real okay. and it was real. And he said, Captain, I can't, I can't make this. Uh... He said, Let, I want you back in the corner. Like, wow. I so there was a you, moment man. where you were out, where you weren't talking to each other. You weren't going to corner him. You were on the outs. There was a real moment where there was a divorce here. For nine weeks, nine. that video was not filmed on Sunday. I, Of course, I know that. But like, you didn't speak. You didn't text. You were on the outs. In your mind, you were done. It's not that I didn't need some secret juice. Hey, you're, I, don't, I keep on thinking this is some guy that works for you. Some guy just sent me another $4.20 on Venmo. <laughs> anyway. Who is it? Is it Ben, uh, is it ben Barna? It's Ben Barna. How the, do you know? He's he's a friend of mine, and I keep <laughs> every time you're on, he sends you money. <laughs> he said it's 420. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I think your buddy likes the reefer. <laughs> That's amazing. But yes, to answer the question, you know, it, it, it's like a a Shakespeare romantic thing where there's romance, breakup, and then wow, recovery All and. Right. Uh, welcome to the world of MMA and it, it, it's drama. And guess what? There was no UFC 300 announcement. And for two days, this everybody everyone had to say, everyone, everyone was calling you, was see Volk about. calling you a piece of this and Matt Brown. Every, every, every interview you everyone was doing was talking about you. You have to understand Henry as a competitor and Henry wanted to make a change and he felt 
Uh, he said one of the things he said he didn't. He, I could have helped him make weight better, so I wanted him to make weight the night before weigh-ins because. And this was actually on on the countdown, but they cut it all out. So I said I wanted. Uh, he was about nine or ten pounds over the night before weigh-ins. So I was like, man, we should get some weight off. He's like, nah, I want to wait till the morning. Well, I've been with Henry for a long time. I was like, man, it's been four years off. To wait till the morning to cut 10 pounds, I'd rather you do it now. He's like, no, I'm going to walk. But then after the walk, uh, I didn't think he was training anymore. And when I saw him in the locker room, boom, he's putting on plastics and get ready to train. He did a like 10 two-minute rounds, hitting mids, back in the sauna, a portable sauna. And he lost 10 pounds in like an hour. Wow. We I thought he was going to lose maybe five, and then we cut to five in the morning. But he lost it all, and he he feels that affected him. And he felt that uh, I was panicking to, to push him to cut that weight the evening before. But as a coach with experience, I wouldn't I would still do the same thing. I would not want a fighter for the body to shut down at between six and nine. You don't have time to take a break. If you do it at 10 p.m., you go two hours of training. You take a break. If you need more, you can go to sleep. But if you more, you can go back at it after a half hour. You don't have that luxury at 6 a.m. to nine. So I'm like, we could lose a title shot if you don't make weight. You right. could lose. You don't get a shot at the title. So, um, but I was going to do whatever he wants. You know, Henry has been uh, has the art of war, the art of violence, the art of combat. He has his own system. He's, he used it to coach Figueredo. You know, he was me and him coach Figueredo to a world title, and he wants to implement his own system into his game. He did last fight, and he wanted to do it th for this fight. So as a coach, I understand the competitiveness of an Olympic champion that's willing to do whatever it takes. Like I said on your show, Business. I'm business too. I told Henry not to pick Brandon Moreno on the Ultimate Fighter. We want. I said Pantoja's number one seed. We'll pick Brandon second. It was a business decision, and there was a MMA world, right? Drama. UFC switched it up on us and put Brandon, UFC champ Brandon, as a 16th seed on the Ultimate Fighter, right? So, uh, who would have known that he was 16th seed? But the UFC did that. But I. Henry made a business decision. I get, I told him, hey, let's pick Pantoja, number one seed. Now he's the champ, right? Yeah. But I've always, that was the business decision that I made. So I understand the business of MMA as well. And if Henry wanted peace of mind, but it's good because I had one of the best boxers in the world, Everton, from the Pitbull Brothers. He's here with Henry. He coached Patrice for the last five years, and now he's coaching Henry. Jose Maria, my fighter from Team Noguera, back in the day, I brought him up, and he's here with him. So I left Henry in good hands, and, I, and I'm confident. Yesterday we practiced. Man, Henry looks great. Henry's unpredictable. Let he's me ask fast. You this. He's Let me ask you this. I have a theory that if it doesn't go his way, let's be honest, Marab is really tough, but I think it's a really even matchup, that this could be truly the end for Henry, that he will, he will call it a career. Is that a possibility? For sure, uh, for sure, it's a possibility, but I don't see, um, I don't see that happening. You know, uh, there's Henry's a different type of competitor, and now that he's got a a, a, a fight underneath him in the last four years with Aljo, and he's got a chip on his shoulder again. This guy's he he's coming to win. And he's coming to win. He's coming to also stamp a shot at UFC 300 if there's somebody available, Sean O'Malley. But that's going to be tough to no. have or Cheeto Vera. That's too either soon. one. But I don't think they would do anything on a four week no, fight. No. They wouldn't take that fight. Only Aljo. UFC 300 is tougher a little bit for Henry unless he went straight for a 145, which is his ultimate goal. This becomes C4, three 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 titles. Uh, it's not easy. We tried it with Patricio before it didn't happen. Um, but Patricio got neck surgery now. So I think he's, he'll be back. I'd like, we'd like that one back as well. D Dana White said yesterday, he made a huge mistake when he walked away. It was a big mistake. And, uh, 
you know, it's something that he's always going to have to, it, it was, it was a massive blunder, I think was the word he used. Do you agree with that? Or is that unfair to say, given where he was at in his life at the time? That's where Henry was at. Henry, I told you before, when he was at the Olympic Training Center as a young kid, he had three goals. Olympic champ, UFC champ, ultimate dad. He did all three. Yeah. What's left to do? Right. What's left to do? Now he has two kids. He's got Enzo. He's got America. And he wants to come back. The greatest combat athlete of all time. Got that competitive itch again. It's even more with a chip on his shoulder after after the judges took it away from him last year. So he's ready. He's ready, and uh, I don't think this will be his last fight. I think this is going to be the fight to propel him to the next stage, which is doing something nobody's ever done. Okay. Now, what about our friend Paulo Costa over there, who I actually think is the greatest combat athlete of all time? I thought you were talking about him when you were uh, saying that. Uh, can't wait to see him back. Haven't seen him in what a year and a half. It's been such a long time, uh, more than a year and a half at this point. Um, how is he looking? Any reservations? It was, uh, August of 2022. The last time we saw him in, uh, in Utah against Luke Rockle, uh, how, how, any reservations about the elbow? He appears to be in tremendous shape. How are you feeling about his big return fight? I feel really good. Uh, he's been waiting waiting for this fight man uh he's ready to explode like every day he he's been waiting every training is like adding just gasoline uh to the fire pit and on february 17th we're gonna light a match boom he's coming for that he's got one against former ufc champion robert whitaker and you know he paulo's fought how many ufc champions now you got johnny hendrix you got luke rockhold you're well Romero, uh, world champion in wrestling, Olympic silver medalist. So, is he? You know, Paulo's looking better than ever. He trained a lot of wrestling for Chimaev. He was so ready for Chimaev. Even with one elbow, he was ready for Chimaev. And he only took a. Excuse, excuse me, that's secret, secret yeah, no. juice. Yeah. Um, uh, he was so ready for Chimaev. He took a couple weeks off and got, went right into camp with for Robert Whitaker. So Robert Whitaker is a former UFC champ. He's very uh, he's a puzzle. He's a puzzle. He's been at the top of this game for five years, and we've been uh, he's been a target that Paulo's been looking at for a while. So Paulo can't wait to put put his hands on him and and, and take care of business. So I and I can't wait. This is a huge fight. I think this is the like you said, the people's fight. Yeah, the people's this, main event. UFC 298, this is the real main event. Paulo Costa, Mr. Secret Juice uh, versus Robert Bobby Knuckles, Brazil versus Australia, and it doesn't get bigger than this. I love it. Well, I'm happy you and Henry are back on good terms. Great to see you out there. Tremendous coat you got, uh, Sport. I don't know if it's a vest, a coat. It's something. It's great. The glasses change in the middle of the interview was fantastic. Uh, the shirt is fantastic. The secret juice, it's all great. So we look forward to seeing you in the corners on Saturday. And then you're off to Saudi Arabia, I presume, right? Saudi Arabia, and I'll be ready to see you next week with Pat Patricio. You got to have this, oh, yeah. the Bellator goat on. He sent you He sent you the darts. He did. Come yes, on. He did. He did. Tell my friends over there, uh, His Excellency, you. I say hello. And maybe we'll have Turkey, Al, yes. Al Al Sheik with him. Yes, the most powerful man in combat. Thank you, Captain Eric. Much love. You want to say I something? Appreciate did it, you want to, what do you want to say? No, I I, I said I, I appreciate it. Okay. Be on the lookout because we're getting two title shots Saturday. It's going to be UFC 298. Right now, to me, is bigger than UFC 300 with the fireworks that's yeah. going to happen on Saturday. And it's possible that some of those fireworks are going to jump over to UFC 200. In particular, I think paulo costa when he after he gets that ko over robert whitaker i think he's gonna grab that mic and you guys are gonna be amazed oh. we're gonna freaking celebrate with the secret juice uh, and, and, and and that's it man and All then right. and then paulo 
I wish I could go to Power be on your show, but I got to head to Saudi Arabia. Never been to Saudi Arabia. Enjoy. Huge uh, fan of them. And that, they have that line. I don't know if you know they're building that that uh, that city. Oh, yeah. It's going to be straight up. It's crazy. And I think uh, that's something I'd, uh, I'd be interested in and actually being a, a part of. So Turkey Al Sheik Sheik is doing huge things out there. Yes. So uh, this is going to be a, a huge fight for the PFL champs versus uh, the Bellator champs. Much love. Uh, say hello to Henry for me. It's been five years since we spoke. No big deal. Say hello to Paulo Costa as well and the whole crew. And good luck to you guys. Thank you. And I wanted to update you. Oh, wow. Okay. Quick update what? because... Remember, I was talking about the Ukrainian fighters. Oh, I have, yes, I yes, have yes. two more brothers. Yes, yes. We have, have, we have our guests bro- standing by. So we, so tell us, what, what do you have to say? We have brothers coming from Ukraine. Okay. And uh, so it, it's it's working out. I'm bringing those guys from it's Ukraine. It's because of my big donation, Brazil, right? My so. big donation when we had the because darts. Because of That's your big right. donation. <laughs> and then, uh, you, to tell you the truth, there's a little politics in there. A lot of people started sending me messages about Ukraine. Uh, so it didn't raise as much. But you were definitely the biggest donor. And and finally, I have enough. The Broad Street Global Fund. Oh, I uh, pretty they, much built that. They're thing. gonna help cover yeah, things. And we're bringing them out, and it's gonna be hit. We're gonna start helping that, helping that, a lot of foreign fighters out to help out, uh, and all the fighters in Brazil and America. I love where, it. Where everybody's welcome to come. So you're welcome too. You right. Never came to Brazil yet. Of course, I've come to Brazil. I was out there at Nog's gym. I saw you in Brazil back in the day, 2011, with Yoel oh. Romero. You gave me the, pay, the pay, on the piece, uh, the piece of paper. Remember, you told me Yoel Romero. Oh my God! Golly, right. Captain that's Eric. Right. Okay, so, all the so best. Now it, Brazil's now called Natalstan. <laughs> that's right. That's how where I'm at. It's called Natalstan, branded because it's gonna be one of the. Uh, it's gonna be the the hub. There's no UFC PI in Brazil. Oh, that's right. I'm gonna make one. Okay. Good luck to you. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Ariel. There he is, Captain Eric Albarcine. Always a great time when he's on the program.